let's come back and start with the next concept that is cold rush laws this is also named in the cold rush laws of independent migration of ions so before starting into the concept let us first understand the graph here i have drawn a graph where you are plotting on the x axis the concentration and on the y axis you are plotting the molar conductivity this is molar conductivity is in it that so now what are we observing first important thing thing just see here this here from zero it is increasing the concentration is increasing towards the right hand side towards the extreme end now here the conductivity from uh, zero it's going on increasing now what is what are you observing here you have two different graphs plotted one kcl here is a strong electrolyte strong electrolyte and here acetic acid is a weak electrolyte okay now observe carefully now when i have to observe or compare both let us start from here now what is this point this is a point where now i said when i go from left to right the concentration is maximum here the concentration is minimum here now observe carefully when it is at the minimum concentration or it is at maximum dilution hope you underst understand that concept concentration minimum means dilution is more sugar solution you are adding more of water that becomes diluted if you are adding less of water to make the sugar solution that means sugar would be more that is a concentrated solution if water is more it is a diluted solution now the concept is when it is a diluted solution yeah or less concentrated solution okay let's come back and write at low concentrations or at high dilutions okay what are you observing for in case of strong electrolyte we are observing the molar conductivity is very very high see here at the high dilution the molar conductivity is very high okay for strong electrolytes strong electrolytes molar conductivity that is lambda m is very high is very high now you have to be careful now this particular point when it is extrapolated or when you are dragging this point and joining here what are you observing this is a point where it is infinite dilution this is dilution concentrated 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 now this point is infinite dilution that infinite dilution is denoted by i'm going to write the first thing that is denoted by molar conductivity at infinite dilution so molar conductivity at infinite dilution so at infinite dilution what is the uh, conductivity of kcl a strong electrolyte it is maximum see here it is almost 150 It's maximum. So that is that is a concept which Kolrash has picked up. So what did he what did he say? Molar conductivity at infinite dilution is equal to, or in the other way I should write, at infinite dilution, the molar conductivity can be expressed as the sum of. Okay, let us write. It is expressed as the sum of the individual cation and its molar conductivity for this plus. plus the individual anion and its molar conductivity minus let us write in words so this is cold rash law what is this now start from here what is this molar conductivity molar conductivity infinite dilution okay at infinite dilutions dilutions molar conductivity molar conductivity can be expressed as okay, let us write here can be expressed as how can i express as the sum of sum of individual cation and anion sum of or the contribution of the cation into the molar conductivity and the anion into the molar conductivity so expressed as the sum of individual ions it can it should be cation and anion by multiplied by their what is this lambda m that is lambda m plus you can write lambda m plus also if you want write like this m da m plus lambda m minus by <coughs> by their molar conductivities okay by their molar conductivity this is called kolrash law 
right so whenever i'm going to reaching this indefinite dilution the whole conductivity is if you have to calculate you can pick up the individual cation individual anion multiplied by the molar conductivity but at this point where it is showing maximum this point is called lambda m infinity this quantity is called molar conductivity at infinite dilution okay let us write all those lambda m infinity is called molar conductivity at infinite dilution first one second one v plus and v minus what are they the number of cations and anions it is number please remember it is a number of cations and anions done next what is this lambda m plus and lambda m minus i is called molar conductivities of molar conductivity of cation and anion so this is your colas law of migration independent migration of ions so these three other factors now let us come back and take some examples and understand what actually is mol colas law Right. Now let's come back and see. Uh, apply the Kolras law to examples. Now Kolras law, you can also just write it like this. It's the same thing, but just see, you can write it as inverted molar conductivity at infinite dilution, which is equal to charge of the cation and the molar conductivity at infinite dilution m. Done. <coughs> okay, this plus also you can write not a problem plus because molar conductivity that correspondingly the molar uh, number of cation charge into molar conductivity in infinite dilution of the particular thing. So this is a concept. Now suppose if I take example, I'm going to take HCl. Here I'm going to take magnesium chloride. Here I'm going to take acetic acid CH3COO minus. Now see what do what should we do here? The cation when it, when this dissociates this breaks up into H plus plus Cl minus this one MgCl2 when it dissociates it breaks up into Mg plus 2 plus 2 Cl minus when you take acetic acid CH3COOH it dissociates into CH3COO minus plus H plus done right now I have to apply this to the example cold dash then what it lambda infinity is equal to the first one this is uh, the charge isn't it means the number v plus so what do you have here v h plus molar conductivity of h plus infinite dilution plus v minus that is your cl minus and lambda infinity minus done so here what is this quantity equal to we very well know what is the number of cation i said this and this is a number of cation and anion now here how many cations are there one so v h plus is one v c l minus is also one so what will happen to molar conductivity to infinite dilution it is if for h c l it is equal to only the molar conductivity of h plus plus molar conductivity of Cl minus at infinite dilution. This is what is going to happen. Let's come back to this. MgCl2. Here when I take molar conductivity, it is equal to start V in this Mg plus 2 and <coughs> molar conductivity of Mg plus 2 uh, plus this is here. This is your anion negative charge. You have to be careful now. Now see here. Now how many are there? There are two. So you have to write two V C L minus infinite and lambda C L minus infinite. Okay. I'm just want you to show that is the particular charge. Now here. Now how many are magnesium ions here? Number of cations only one. Here how many are C L minus here? V C L minus is two. So come back what will be molar conductivity be equal to molar conductivity will be equal to V <coughs> so this has become one isn't it so I will not take I will take only mg plus 2 infinity plus 2 into right now this is 2 isn't it yeah so 2 into lambda Cl minus infinity this is for your floor. Let's come back and see acetic acid. Here acetic acid again, what is the thing? 
I have to write infinity is equal to V of CH3CO minus infinity of CH3CO minus okay uh, infinity plus next for H plus V H plus <coughs> at infinity and lambda H plus at infinity for th for this one it is one one cation also is one so what will this molar conductivity be equal to it will be equal to lambda CH3 CO minus at infinity plus the H plus at infinity so this is how Kohlrausch has designed or framed the formula for finding out for molar conductivity for strong and weak electrolytes so let us come back and start with the applications of Kohlrausch law so you have to start Kohlrausch law from that infinite dilution and then end till here